it's Adam from Lucy Pixel, and welcome back. Now, what I want to share my thoughts on today is not something that I feel I, or realistically anybody, could really have a solution to. If you're looking for one of those top 10 tips on overcoming this obstacle videos, then you've probably come to the wrong place. Instead, what I want to share with you today are my thoughts and feelings around the topic of guilt. Guilt of not being productive enough. Guilt of not being successful enough. Guilt of not doing what you should be doing when you feel you should be doing it. Guilt of distracting yourself with too many different things. There's a multitude of different ways that people in general can feel guilty. I think guilt is something that we, <laughs> that we don't lack in today's society. However, the reason I want to address this to you, being artists, of course, is because artistic guilt, I find, might be a little bit more common based on the fact that our career path, the steps, the, the process at which we, we pursue our goals and achieve our goals, and furthermore, figure out what the hell our goals are in the first place, is so varying that it can be one of the things that can get between us and our ability to, to be as productive, to be as successful as we might want to be is because we're not exactly sure how to do that in the first place. It's not like, you know, programming, you learn a programming language, you learn how to execute that language. You make sure that you, all of the commas and, and periods and, and words are well spelt in the right order with no spaces in it. And as long as you execute that the right way, you can do your job. Right now, of course, there's the creative aspect of programming. I'm not knocking that, but it's a language. You learn the language, you learn how to ma manipulate it, you learn how to create with it. But with art, there are fundamentals, there's anatomy, there's perspective, there's 3D forms, there's colors, there's color harmony, there's visual storytelling, there's composition, <laughs> there's structure, etc. But how we use those, how we play with those tools, which ones we emphasize, which ones lead to which type of careers and which ones lead to other type of careers. So there's so many different questions. There's so many different possibilities that the very act of settling on something can seem like an impossible task. I'd say one of the biggest contributors to procrastination is having too many options. If I, for instance, if I hand you a Photoshop color wheel that, that can, that can offer you, that offers you access, immediate access to 17.95376 million colors, and I ask you to achieve harmony with it, and you've never taken a lesson in harmony, then where the hell do you start, right? <laughs> There's too many possibilities. There's too much there, and I don't know how to manage that, but instead... If I hand you nothing but yellow and blue, and I ask you to do a painting with just those two colors, yellow, blue, black, and white, there you go. It's amazing how much more productive, how much more creatively free you can be with that limited set of options. You're not, you're not sitting there trying to juggle 6,000 things. Instead, you're just trying to juggle one or two. And it's for this reason that many, are, uh, very often, traditional artists will limit their palette to a very limited number of colors, and they learn how to mix to achieve harmonies in specific ways. Now, of course, this isn't a lesson on color harmony, so I won't, I don't want to get too uh, overwhelming with that. But that's the general gist of it. By limiting your options, you are allowing yourself to invest more of your energy into being creative with those options that you have. And exactly the same thing applies to an artistic career. You have so many different, you, you're presenting yourself with so many different types of career paths you could take with your artistic skill. Realism, fantasy, cartooning, animation. Well, what kind of animation? Is it uh, rubber hose, old school, traditional animation like Roger Rabbit? Or is it uh, more Don Bluth, uh, rotoscopy style animation that's got a tinge of realism to it? Is it more Disney-esque? Is it more Looney Tunesy? Is it more John Kay? Is it Cow and Chicken? Is it gorillas, you know? Like, what kind of animation style are we pursuing? Or if it comes to fine arts, is it surrealist? Is it abstract? Is it, is it expressionist? Is it impressionist? Is it pointillist? Is it cubist? I mean, the list goes on. So as we're pursuing this artistic career, 
very often the very thing that can overwhelm and and become daunting to you is what kind of an artistic career should I be committing myself to? So I'm going to allude back to a talk, an art talk I already did years ago, talking about commitment. And one big element of choosing a path in your life has to do with how you interpret the, interpret the word commitment. We very often tend to put this very final, very fatalistic interpretation on commitment. We think of commitment in terms of finding our true destiny, our true calling. And there's this ridiculous belief system that we have to, by the age of 22, we have to make a decision on the rest of our lives that we need to be satisfied with for the next six, seven decades. If you think about it in that context, it's kind of ridiculous. So the word commitment ends up having this incredible weight to it, this incredible level of responsibility to it. And as such, because you're afraid to take that big, huge step that will define the rest of your life, it scares you away. And you go, oh, I don't want to go too far in that direction because I'm not sure if that's the right step to take. I would argue that people that, are hard, that have a hard time, not everybody, but I'd find that a lot of people, particularly artists that have a hard time choosing a direction in their life, are people that take their decisions very seriously. I think that the very fact that you fear making a decision, taking a step in your life, something very definitive in your life is because you have integrity, isn't it? And that you take your choices, you choose your words carefully. Somebody who might have a very hard time committing to a certain career path is probably the same type of person who thinks two or three times before they say something because they're very sensitive about your feelings. That's a quality, isn't it? So what, I'm, what I encourage you to do is, like I mentioned in this video, like I said, I recorded years ago, is redefine the word commitment. Commitment does not need to mean, in fact, I think it's stupid to interpret it as the rest of your life. My true love, she who I will marry and love unconditionally for the next 75 million years. No. Commit to somebody, marry them, fall in love with them, have kids with them, but don't think that every single decision that you make in your life is final. And treat every day as a unique experience. Because if you're thinking to yourself, shit, I committed to somebody for the rest of my life and we had an argument. This means that I've made a mistake. No, relax, work out that, <laughs> work it out. If you can't work it out and if the, if the relationship goes completely toxic and you can't stand each other, then maybe you need to pull out of that relationship. Maybe that commitment you made was not the best one and it's time to separate in a healthy, cordial way without traumatizing anybody. But you gave it your best shot. You had to have, you had to experience it. You had to live with it in order to know whether or not you'd made the right decision. You, but you had to give it a fair chance. You know, if, you know, you get into a relationship and the first time somebody burps, you go, eh, gross, you're dumped. <laughs> and you run out the back door. You haven't given it a good chance, have you? So put that, take that and put that in the context of art. You don't, just because you're saying, I want to pursue, for instance, I don't know, uh, you know, medieval fantasy art doesn't mean that you have to do medieval fantasy art for the next 60 years. I mean, I started my career early off in my career wanting to be a traditional Disney cartoonist. I, Disney, it was like, I had posters Disney all over the place. It was a Disney guy. And then that changed. And the first time, I remember the first experience I had when I finally decided to myself, you know what, I really don't know if this is the direction I want to go. I mean, I love it. And it's definitely a big part of who I am. And it'll always be a part of my heritage and my and my foundation artistically. But I feel the need to, to evolve into something else. And it was a scary decision. And I felt at the time that I was that I was betraying myself and betraying my quote, true calling. But I'm extremely grateful I did. And I realized looking back that it was an incredibly important, integral and meaningful part of my artistic, my own personal artistic heritage. But I'm very grateful I did not make it the be all end all, but I needed to commit to it. I needed to become, so I needed to identify myself as being a quote cartoonist. And you know what? I still do. Even though I do, you know, dark fantasy art most of the time nowadays, that's my main shtick. I still very much have the heart 
of an animator. And when I sit down and I talk animation with my friends, believe you me, I can shoot the shit until I'm blue in the face. No problem there. I'm as passionate as I was back then. I just haven't... That isn't what keeps gets me up every day to draw and create. What I'm doing now is what gets me up to draw and create. I allowed myself to evolve. I, I now regard it not as a betrayal. I regard it as an evolution, a necessary evolution, an evolution that has, has forged me into a dark fantasy artist who has a bit of an original twist because I, because of my animation roots. It impacts the way I teach on a very profound level. It impacts the way I create. But during that period, that transitional period, when I had lost my footing, when I didn't, I didn't have my feet in one pond or another, there was a lot of procrastination. And this might be the procrastination, procrastination that you might be dealing with at this particular point in, in your life. And it might be a point in your life where you're 19. It might be a point in your life where you're 37. It, it these, the, these moments of insecurity in the direction of your life in your artistic pursuits can resurface at any point in your life whatsoever. I've spoken to artists of every age, younger and older than me. We all go through that. But it's because you have, you're, you're in the process of letting go of something or because you haven't yet held on to anything with two hands just yet, that there might be the fear of commitment. And my suggestion to you is the choice you make doesn't have to be the best one. It just needs to be one that you find kind of fun and exciting. And it's through the act of giving it the time that it deserves. It's through the act of, of identifying with it and saying, this is who I am. I can say today with absolute confidence that I am a dark fantasy artist, which would have been blasphemy to me if I told you, if I said that same sentence two decades ago, because it would have completely contradicted who I felt I was at the time. I was a Disney cartoonist through and throughout. But now I'm a dark fantasy artist and I'm proud to say that I am. And I, I allowed myself permission to do that. I allowed myself to evolve into that. But it's the act of being able to say, this is who I am. This is how I identify myself that allows me to grow. But I'm going to throw a little caveat on that. Because in the same breath where I'm saying commit to something, at the same time, overly committing to only one thing can also demotivate or discourage you. And I'll be completely frank with you. If all I ever did 24 hours a day, and this is not the first time I've said this on my channel. If all I ever did every day was just paint, paint, paint the same thing every day, all this dark fantasy, all these characters, no, no, no. If all I did was that every day, day in and day out, then I would go stir crazy. It would reach a point in my life where, where if anybody even asked me to pick up a drawing pencil, I would go screaming out the other, the, screaming out the back door. Because my heart, my life, my growth, my artistic process, what motivates me, it re requires taking little detours every now and then. I love learning everything but tying it into art. That's what, that's what I love about art. It's not the fact that it just makes me great at drawing. It's the fact that art is my anchor, my connection point to everything else in life. So where did I learn how to use this microphone, this Shure SM7B and the MixPre3 amp that I purchased and researched for for months and months to know that I got enough gain and a clean enough signal and it had uh, an analog limiter. And how the hell do I know that what any of that stuff is? Or the fact that right now I'm sitting at my, at my recording desk with a big aperture 120D Mark II shining on me just to warm me up because I haven't turned the heating on because I don't trust the weather. <laughs> the shifts in weather right now, snowing one day and 20 degrees Celsius the next. How do I know about all this stuff? Because I put my drawing pencil once down once in a while to learn other things, to learn about lighting, to learn about camera lenses, to learn about shutter speed, to learn about audio equipment, to learn about audio editing and, and monitoring headphones and set design and you name it. And in turn, all of these different little side hobbies and passions, things that pull me away from drawing, 
I have found, in turn, have contributed more than I could possibly imagine to art, to drawing, to painting, to teaching. You, you can ask any one of my students how much art that I teach that isn't directly related to drawing and painting. How much, uh, how I, how I explain color harmony through sound waves. <laughs> you don't believe me? Just ask any of my students. They'll be able to testify. Yeah, you, to know that connection between sound waves and lighting a studio and color harmony. There's a direct connection between all of them. Want to find out? Well, go learn about go learn about a frequency curve. Go learn about editing sound. And you'll start to learn what I'm talking about. Or exploring set design and editing and how that contributes to set design and and environmental illustrations and costume design in illustration. All of these things tie together. And I found that it's through all of these little these detours I've taken in my life, all of these little side passions that I have that I take in my life that keeps life fresh. It keeps it keeps me learning and expanding and connecting to different communities and different worlds and in turn also contributing to me becoming a better, more well-rounded, more inspired and more motivated artist. And I've spoken about in my talk about artistic motivation and inspiration. I talked about this very thing as well. So don't be afraid to commit to something, to get good at something. And if you feel like you're bottlenecked somewhere, don't be afraid to diversify yourself and pull away from that core linear, uh, singular focused mentality and use your peripheral vision a little bit more and start to bring other things in. And very often the answers that you seek will be found through things that have nothing to do with paint and a paintbrush. It might have something to do with a camera and a lens. It might have something to do with carpentry. It might have to do something with mechanics. You never know. So stay curious in that regard. And then there's the other thing. And I just want to tap on this because this is also important. I spent a great deal of my childhood. I grew up being a passionate video gamer. I've always loved video games. I've always mentioned that. But I grew up playing video games. I grew up with distractions in my life. There's a million and a half things we can distract ourselves with. Social media or video games or picking belly button lint, whatever the hell it is we're doing, petting our cat. Every now and then we do need a distraction. And I'll tell you something. It's important to wit not to not only commit to creation and to growth and to productivity artistically and professionally, but it's also important to commit to distractions once in a while too. And I'll tell you why, because when you half-ass anything, you're not gaining anything from it. And if you're sitting there and you've decided you want to sit down and, and play Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the PlayStation 5 that I'll never get because of freaking scalpers. When I sit down to play a game, I have to dis I've learned to discipline myself to say between this hour and this hour is video game time. And I'm going to, I'm going to put on my headphones. I'm going to crank up the volume. I'm going to turn my TV on and I'm going to get completely lost in my me time. And I really commit myself to my me time. And I'm instead of sitting there playing video games, thinking to myself, why the hell am I playing video games when I should be drawing right now? I should be producing something. I should be doing something. I shouldn't be wasting my time. And the reason why this is important is because I'll be honest with you, distractions are incredibly important for mental health. Through all of this crap that's going on with the coronavirus and politics and, you know, and, and voter turnout and voter claims of voter fraud and uh, old age homes and, uh, you know, you know, abuse in old age homes and domestic violence and climate change and so many different freaking stresses out there. Do you know who I appreciate reaching out to, do you know what I rely on for my mental health through all of this? PewDiePie. I rely on, on camera conspiracies, on Bill Burr, on signs of Kalani, <laughs> on fighting cowboy, on Jor Raptor, on, I rely on people who have the strength and the discipline to crack a little joke and uh, 
sprinkle a little bit of lightheartedness on the world while everybody else is taking themselves too goddamn seriously. Because if you're constantly, constantly caught up with the serious side of life, it'll wear you out real fast. And you need to give yourself a definitive time slot, definitive permission to say, I feel like just being stupid and having a good laugh, period. And I don't want to listen to any of this shit. I don't want to sit there and worry about, you know, being a multimillionaire. I don't want to sit there and worry about getting 6 million subs per video. I don't want to sit there and worry about, you know, about, you know, getting 17 doctorates in, in 12 months. I just want to sit down and play a video game. I want to sit down and watch a movie and chill out with my kids, chill out with my family, sit alone in my own little private bubble with a nice pair of headphones on and listen to some music and let go. And by committing yourself to that time off, you satisfy yourself. You get it out of your system. You feel refreshed. You feel happy. And then you can put on your headset, put on some inspiring music, pick up your paintbrush and start to create. And because you've given yourself a break, you might have given yourself a bit of a distraction, but at the same time, you might have discovered something that inspired you and pulled you back into drawing. And this happens to me all the time. I decide, you know, you know, oh, I'm sick and tired. I don't, I honest to God, don't feel like drawing another damn line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go stir crazy if I draw anything else. I'm, I'm tired of this. I've been video editing and audio editing and drawing all week and everything like that. I just wanna take a goddamn break. And I pick up my remote control and I start to play my game and I'm about 30 minutes into the game. And I'm like, oh God, that makes me think that's it. And I realized I was working on a character design and that creature in the video game had that kind of look to it that I realized I wanted to add to the character. And I dropped my remote control of the game. I just pause the game and I jump back on my, on my, at my computer and I start to draw again. This happens to me all the time. But it happened for fun. It happened on a whim. It happened because I had that spontaneous inspiration and it drew me back to art. But I had committed myself fully to not drawing anything at all. And sometimes life just throws you curveballs and inspires you. But at least I gave myself permission to fully have fun and fully let go. Now, if that's all you're doing, maybe there's an other reason. If all you want to do is distract yourself all the time and you never want to draw, maybe it's because of one of the other reasons I brought up. Maybe it's because maybe it's because you just feel the weight, uh, the pressure and the weight of success on your shoulders. There's a reason why very often people who are over controlled and over pressured by parents or peers or teachers to be the best of the best of the best 24 hours a day, there's a very good reason why a lot of these people end up burning themselves out or end up giving up on things. I remember growing up having a bit of an affinity for piano and my grandmother one day said to me, Adam, if you want to be successful in, in piano, you have to practice, practice, practice every single day. You eat, you sleep, you go to the bathroom and you practice, practice, practice every day, practice, practice. And what she didn't realize is prior to, the, prior to me starting piano lessons, I played piano 15 hours a day. <laughs> I got lots of practice because it was fun, because I was passionate, because I'm, I'm a self-learner. And I love learning things at my own pace, in my own direction, and my at my own speed. But when I commit to something, I commit to it deeply because I'm, I tend to be very passionate about the things that I'm learning. And as soon as she started to force it down my throat, she took ownership. It became it no longer became my thing that I controlled, that I directed. It became a forced thing on me. And as soon as she did that, as soon as she my 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 drive and passion to learn died immediately. I took my hands off the piano keys and I walked away because she should have left me alone. She should have trusted that I had that ability to do it on my own. And being over controlled suffocated me and it uninspired me. So you have to take ownership of that space. If you're somebody who's self-driven, but you have people around you that are constantly reminding you or slamming you over the head with the sledgehammer of being productive all the time, that might actually be a very strong factor in the fact that every single time you think of pick, picking up a paintbrush, you start to have heart palpitations. There's too much pressure involved in it. And as soon as somebody says, you know what? You're already a success. You're going to do just fine. I trust you. You're a very talented artist. Do it at your own pace. I guarantee you within five hours, you're going to look back over at your table. You're going to light your computer back up and you're going to start to draw. Because you, you, because somebody gave you ownership of that process back again. And that's a nice feeling as well. So like I said, 
I'm not giving you a solution today, but I want you to know that this is what you might be experiencing, which I'm sure most of you do experience because you're an artist, because you're a human being, that it's you're not a flawed, uninspired, unmotivated waste of a human being. You are, in fact, probably taking life a little bit too seriously and you are putting too much weight on your shoulders to be that perfectly productive powerhouse industrious person and by taking a by giving yourself a much needed committed break every now and then and furthermore taking making a commitment towards towards a lifestyle without thinking that it's the last decision you're ever going to make in your entire life can make the process of growing and expanding and becoming what you want to become a lot easier on your soul. All right. And with that said, I love you all with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.